Spicy Pie, Pizza, Grinders, Beer. Magic City Hoagies, locally owned sandwich shop located in Southwest Minot. Taco John's, offering fresh tacos, burrito, PMQ Entertainment, performing at weddings, proms, and dances. The Pursuit, creating a place in Minot where everyone is welcome. Mouse River Players, community theater since 1971. H Bar B Construction, for all your oil field needs. Bear Scat Donuts, located on Broadway across from Minot State Campus. And welcome back to Inside Out. Like I said before the break, a huge night for alumni and the Booster Club at tomorrow's basketball doubleheader, and that's thanks to an incredible athletics and marketing department. And with us is Katie Thomas, the Assistant Director of Athletics uh, for Strategic Communications. Katie, tomorrow is a huge night for alumni. Want to tell us more? Absolutely. So we just love the fact that the Minot community is just so engaged and wanting to help and are so in at every game, they're supportive, they love our athletics department, our department, so we just want to give back to them. So we have our alumni appreciation night tomorrow, um, 5.30 and 7.30. The women's and men's basketball teams are taking on Augustana University, some really tough opponents, so we're looking for a really great matchup. Absolutely, and it's hard to give away, uh, or not give away, but for free meal and giveaways, it's an yes. easy way to come out and it's Easy, support. easy way to come out. So 5 p.m. the meal will be started. So while supplies less, so get there early. Um, there is a card that went out to everyone in the mail. If you haven't gotten that, you can call Jana McKechnie in the alumni office. It's 3373 is the extension. And then also it's our Excel Energy Green Out game. So we're really looking forward to showing some reusable techniques. So how do we kind of take down our carbon footprint. So we wanted to kind of give some off to our fans and our students. So we have free reusable water bottles that are greened out for the MSU logo and we're really excited to give those to our fans. Absolutely, and it seems that there's gonna be another feature, Night of Champions for the yes. baseball team. Yes, we just love to throw a bunch of really great things in one day. So as many of you know, our 2018 baseball team had a great season, NSIC championship. So their rings are in and we like to celebrate a great basketball night as well as our baseball team. So we'll, that'll be our half time of the men's game, being able to showcase all of those student athletes and have everybody there to just kind of support Beaver Athletics. Well, it sounds like a really big night to come out and enjoy. Thank <laughs> yeah. you, Katie, for coming out. Absolutely. And Thanks for was, having me. Uh, Katie, the Assistant Director of Athletics for Strategic Com Communications. The alumni night is tomorrow at 5.30. Food starts at 5. And speaking of basketball, uh, Taylor Rizar is here with some sports news. Yeah, especially... Uh, building off of such a big weekend last weekend, especially individually and team. So I feel like tomorrow's gonna have a, a big environment, especially after last weekend's big run. So I can tell you more about that right now. The Minot State women's basketball team collected their first sweep of the season. The Beavers first defeated Bemidji State in a nail-biter double overtime game on Friday, 86 to 74. Senior Mariah Payne led the team with 18 points and was followed by fellow senior Maddie Wald with 15. The Minot native would stay hot on Saturday to cap off the weekend by joining the 1,000 point club at MSU. She collected 22 points in the win against Minnesota Crookston. Payne also collected 22 points and seven rebounds as the Beavers defeated the Golden Eagles 80 to 69. The Beavers will face Augustana and Wayne State Friday and Saturday in the MSU Dome. The MSU men's basketball team split on the weekend. Following a tough loss to Bemidji State on Friday, the Beavers sought out their fourth conference win on Saturday. The Beavers did that and more and collected a dominating 29-point win over Minnesota Crookston. Five Beavers were in double figures on the day. Senior David Akibo led with 28 points and collected seven boards. Redshirt sophomore Cody Dwyer had a career-high 16 points and hit eight of nine shots from the floor. The Beavers look for more conference wins this weekend as they take on Augustana and Wayne State following the women's games. Minot State track and field had two record-breaking performances this past weekend. 
Junior Leo Skellinger broke the D2 era record in the 5,000 meter with a time of 15.17.97 at the UND Open. Sophomore Colin Olson also broke the D2 era record for the mile with a time of 4.34.78. Congratulations to Leo and Colin on your achievements. The Beavers will travel to Fargo for the NDSU Bison Open this weekend. The Minot State men's hockey team will be heading into their toughest stretch of the season tomorrow night against Illinois. The Beavers are riding a 12-game win streak into the weekend and are ranked 11 nationally. In the previous meeting with Illinois, the Beavers picked up a 2-1 emotional win in overtime. Head coach Wade Regeer wants the team prepared for anything that gets thrown their way. We did a lot of situational awareness, situational positioning, and situational uh, setups where you know put them in, in unfamiliar situations and then adapt and adjust while skating. Game times are 7.30 p.m. on Friday and 7 p.m. on Saturday. The Minot State women's hockey team has been putting together a remarkable season. After a national tournament berth last season and a second place finish, the Beavers have certainly carried the momentum. The Lady Beavers are currently 15-1 on the season and are ranked number one in the West region. Junior Mackenzie Balog leads the team with 22 goals on the year. Their next contest will be at Lakehead University in Ontario, who handed them their only loss of the season so far on November 10th. 2019 Beaver Softball is underway. The team flies down to Las Vegas for the Desert Stinger Softball Tournament. MSU is coming off of a 25-24 overall record last season, but broke over 20 Division II era records. The Beavers will play Northwest Nazarene University and Humboldt State University on Friday. The teams will then take on Montana State University Billings and San Francisco State on Saturday and will then conclude play with Cal State Monterey Bay on Sunday. So there's going to be a lot of athletic events going on this weekend, guys. I feel like the softball team's a little lucky, though, because they get to experience a little bit warmer temperatures in Las Vegas. Definitely warmer. And I want to give a shout out to Leo. I was in class with Leo last semester, and I'll tell you what. One heck of a runner, and those guys work really hard to run that far. So uh, congratulations, Leo. Big shout out to you. Yeah, and jealousy is, of course, really <laughs> high for the softball team. They're hitting off their season on the road, and we're going to throw it over to Kyler Sharp with more details. Beaver softball is heading to Vegas this weekend to take their swing at the Desert Strike. Joining me now via Skype is redshirt junior Monica Rivera. Thanks for being on today, Monica. You're welcome. So Monica, tell me how important it is for you to make a good debut for Minot State. It's really important just because of the fact that I haven't been like in that setting and on dirt in like two years probably. So it's going to be kind of crazy to be back on dirt, but it's very important for me to make a big impression on all the teams. So with you guys going to Vegas, there's a little bit of a different atmosphere when you're here in Minot. You guys play on turf. Will you guys be playing on dirt in Vegas? Yes, we'll be playing on dirt, and most of us will be wearing spikes, and we haven't practiced with spikes in about, like, five months. So what are the challenges with that? So with spikes, you kind of are, like, off the ground a little bit more, and you get more, like, traction on the dirt. And at the same time, you also work your calves more. So it just depends on like how your legs feel at the end of the day, I guess. What time will your guys' games be this weekend? On, well, tomorrow we play at 2 and 7 Vegas time. Okay. And then I'm not really sure about the other games. Okay. One last question, Monica. You have a lot of freshmen coming in 
to the team this year. What is the biggest expectations you have for them? My biggest expectation for them is really just to play their hearts out, honestly, because there's so many of them, and I just don't want them to be afraid of anything, just because of the fact that we're all learning all together. So it's just like our coach tells us, it's family, so we all just have to stick together at the end of the day. All right. Thank you so much for being on today, Monica. Thank you for letting me fill in for you today as well, and best of luck to you guys this weekend. All right, that's Beaver softball. They play this weekend. Good luck to the Beavers, and I'm going to send it back over to David and Josh. Thank you very much. Good luck, uh, like you said, to the ladies. And it's my pleasure to introduce once again on the program, Shalom Bayer with some more news for us. Sounds good. Um, so a vocal quartet of Minot State students will be going to Norway this spring with the Minot State Choir. Vox Humana is made up of four senior music education majors, Jacoby Wallace, Kaylee Cap, Maddie Sem, and Nathan Bowles. The quartet currently performs at Minot State and in the Minot community. This past holiday season, Vox Humana performed at the, um, excuse me, at Christmas on Broadway with the Minot Symphony Orchestra in Old Maine. Last night, they sang at the Bethany Lutheran Church downtown for the annual Rhubarb Fest. The Wellness Center has a new challenge to keep you on track. Based on the popular TV show, The Biggest Loser, the objective is to lose the largest percentage of weight between now and March 6th. You can weigh in any time at the Wellness Center to check your progress and even set up personalized small group training sessions to keep yourself on track. All participants will be entered into a drawing for a prize and the winners will receive an even larger prize to be announced at a later date. I just think it's a good way to get motivated and a good way to get active. It's not so much about losing the weight, it's more about just doing something that will better your health. Um, so for us, we just want to see people moving and moving often. The enter to MSU Biggest Loser Challenge is February 8th. With classes starting back up, many students have to purchase new textbooks. The Minot State University Bookstore encourages students to purchase their textbooks before classes start. Despite this, many students wait to see their professor in person all of our to ask if they require the textbook. If students still have to purchase their textbooks, the bookstore offers many solutions. So we give an option to order, and usually it takes two business if everything is fine when it's come to you know, shipping from, uh, from publisher to here. Mm -hmm. So we order them without charging any extra, or we offer electronic version, ebook, you know, depending on a uh, textbook. So David, um, have you gotten a chance to get your textbooks this year? I have. Uh, sometimes I buy them, sometimes I rent them, depending on uh, what the price range is and if I think I'm going to use them for the future. But I can tell you right now, I have a nice a little storage chest full of books that are worth about twelve hundred dollars but I'm gonna yeah, keep them for I future see. reference who knows my son's going to probably go here and if he does maybe he'll take some classes and save down a little bit of money on the, there you on go. the work that makes sense. Uh, with me I am pleased to have Kevin Harmon who is the Minot State University Vice President for Student Affairs pleasure to have you on the program nice being here two words uh, polar vortex something that uh, has been in the news uh, people were talking about it and and knowing about this weather situation affecting our area but we had a chance to visit off camera that even before this cold snap several days ago the university has been working very busy on keeping make, um, the, the students warm and safe on campus. Yes, uh, even just in the last week, uh, last Wednesday evening, there was a, a storm warning, uh, as was Sunday evening. And so on those types of nights, uh, President Shirley and the rest of the executive team on president's staff uh, will coordinate, usually through email or texting, at about 9 p.m. Uh, we'll actually have someone from our physical plant uh, go out and uh, physically walk and drive through the campus and the community at 4 a.m. to make a determination if we're going to be on. So that's actually been the last week. So 
the polar vortex of Tuesday and Wednesday. <laughs> uh, we've been warmed up uh, from last Wednesday and Sunday night, and uh, it certainly was all on with this last weather event that we've experienced. It definitely, and you know, we were talking also that uh, this isn't something that you just plan. You said a night or two ahead. That this is this is constantly planning, constantly looking at it, and of course the safety utmost concern uh, with 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 the students because even for the seasoned residents of Minot, it, it got dangerously cold, and I think that was one of the considerations to close the campus on Wednesday. Absolutely. Um, it's a fine line that we walk, and whether uh, making school closure is uh, one of the most difficult decisions that we make, but especially due to cold. Uh, if you think about it, we, have, uh, we can have blizzards or uh, closing of roads, which is a lot easier in making decisions. But when it's sunny and it's 15 degrees or 15 below, that makes it all more difficult. Uh, you have to take into other kinds of factors, uh, wind chill. Uh, we have a large commuter population here at Minot State mm -hmm. uh, with only three to 400 students basically living on campus, maybe another couple of hundred living within eight blocks, so we know they're walking. So that changes our mindset as we make decisions and, and determinations. And really, the difference between last week, Tuesday and Wednesday, was it was 15 degrees. Uh, 15 below, uh, basically we were in that 13 to, to 17 below on Tuesday, um, and the forecast for that evening was going to be minus 32. And so we have been, have been in communication with Tom Schrader from KX, as well as our area school superintendents, uh, trying to get the best information. And we decided on Tuesday afternoon that it, it was just too cold, it was uh, not safe. Uh, for our students, uh, faculty, and staff to be trying to come to campus. I'll commend you with that decision, and you talked about the faculty, faculty plant. So not only on the administrative side, but on all of those individuals who work behind the scenes to make sure everything from the sidewalks being safe to the parking lots being cleared, a big shout out and thank you to them because it's a lot of work to keep the campus clear of snow and ice on these very cold days. We really do appreciate that. Well, we talked about the weather. I would definitely like to invite you back on the show in the future and we'll talk about something other than the cold weather if that's okay with you. Sounds great. All right, once again, that's Kevin Harmon, the Minot State University Vice President for uh, uh, Academic Affairs. Pleasure to have you on Inside Out. Speaking of the weather, I think it's time to have our very own weather forecast uh, and finding out what's going on with that. Hannah, glad to have you back again this semester. How yes, are you doing? Glad to be back, David. You know, I'm just real happy to report that I don't have to tell you guys about the cold weather that we have, but stay tuned. We're not out of the deep zone yet, or however you would say it. But today, right now, it's looking nice. Off in the west, it's really warm, like 24 degrees. I mean, you can't complain about that compared to negative 30. <laughs> in Minot, we are at 9 right now, 9 above 0, which is, again, wonderful, especially since the wind is less than 10 miles per hour, so it actually feels like 9 degrees. But I can't say the same for our friends off to the east. Not only are the air temperatures cold, but they also have some strong winds going on right now. So it's making it feel even colder. They're still having some of those temperatures that we were having uh, just a couple days ago. So I feel bad for them. But I have good news. We have one team, they win for traveling the farthest this weekend. That's our softball team. Taylor told us about uh, their competition in the Desert Storm, uh, the Le Las Vegas Desert Stinger Tournament, I should say. Um, and it's going to be really nice for them, especially on Friday. Friday is going to be the most perfect day, I think, for softball playing. 66 degrees, light wind, no chance of rain or anything. But on fr Saturday night, or Saturday when they're playing, I should say, there is a chance of rain in the evening and afternoon hours. So hopefully that doesn't interfere with their games. And I know the wind is supposed to pick up too. It's supposed to be around 20 miles per hour, and that's for Saturday and Sunday. So even though there is a slight warm up on Sunday, the wind might not be their best friends, but of course for our Minot team, they're not gonna feel too cold in those 60 degree temperatures. But here's those cold temperatures that I was telling you to look out for later on this week. Tomorrow, it'll be nice. That'll be 60 degrees warmer than it was on Wednesday, which is just kind of mind-blowing, that 31 degrees down from 30 uh, air temperature. That's amazing. And it's going to be wonderful. But then we're having sort of that polar vortex feeling once again. Um, starting Sunday afternoon, we are supposed to see some snow, and that's supposed to last through Tuesday and just have those freezing cold temperatures again with those strong winds. 
But on the plus side, we've already been through the worst of it, I think. Knock on wood. I don't see any wood around me to knock on. Thank you, David, for knocking on wood back there. Um, but it's not supposed to be as bad as it was last week. So just bundle up. You guys already know what to do. And I will send it back over to you, David, and Josh. Thanks a lot, Hannah. Always a pleasure to have you uh, doing the weather and back again this semester. Always does a great job. Um, who else can put a great spin on a polar vortex than her, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> well, we want to thank everybody that was on the program for today. This, of course, is our first of many Inside Out shows for the semester. Yeah. Excited. How did you enjoy the first one? Absolutely. It was great. Yes. Uh, wonderful experience, and I'm looking forward to working, too, with the crew and everything. Well, I'll tell you what, we are uh, looking forward to having more interviews in the future. And if uh, any of uh, the students or faculty out there have uh, interest in uh, being on the program or have topics around Minot State University that they would like to bring for us to be on the a pro future program, we'd love to hear from you. You can uh, reach out to us and be part of the professional communications department outreach. I say outreach is the more the information that they send us, the more information we get on the television. And of course, the more pats on the back, hopefully we get around campus when people watch us and and give us uh, that hopefully that positive impact. So. We're getting ready to wrap up our first program. Once again, Josh, it's been a pleasure working with you and the rest of the KMSU Inside Out staff for our first program of the spring 2019 semester. We'll see you all back again next Thursday.